Hello, this is Kristen at Kentucky Reptile Zoo. I'm here with Jim and we're extracting from uh, lancehead vipers. These are common lanceheads, both Rops Aatrox. Uh, this video will be ones that are uh, bloodline from Suriname. And uh, lancehead vipers in general are strong, uh, wiry snakes. So they have a lot of movement and uh, you can see they have decent sized fangs there. And they have a pretty good strike range, so they really can uh, be a dangerous animal just because of their agility. Uh, one thing we wanted to talk about uh, today was a little bit about equipment and technique. And you'll notice Jim has two hooks. Uh, because these snakes have a st longer strike distance, he's using the bigger hook to bring them out of the enclosure, so he's not reaching his hand too far in but then he really does need the smaller hook in order to pin them, uh, just because otherwise the leverage would be like wrong to be using that big giant hook way up in the air to pin them. And we do check our equipment before uh, we start each day. So I didn't video that, but we did check it to make sure it was all intact, not breaking or falling, in any, falling apart in any way. She's full. And this snake probably has babies in her. You can see uh, right in here how kind of rounded she is. Uh, those are those are babies. And you can see how these snakes pretty much universally are fairly aware of Jim being there. So he's being pretty vertical uh, with the hook in order to kind of stay out of their range. I'll try to see if I can get a little bit to show you the fangs. That's not really working. I'll try next time. I don't know if you guys caught that little strike. Oh, she just shed her skin. This one is one of the more reactive ones we have. So Jim's just gonna try to move really slowly to try to keep her calm if we can. So you can see in comparison to the other one, she's very uh, high alert. She really bit that. And these guys really do have very large fangs. I think you can see that right there. And then uh, sometimes people ask us why we don't use parafilm uh, on all snakes. And you can see here why, because the snake can just easily hook its fangs over the edge of the funnel. There's just real no reason to waste the parafilm, we think. In case you didn't see the strike, here it is in slow motion. It was pretty quick. This snake also sprayed venom when it struck the funnel. You can see it in the slow clip right there. All right, so now we're moving on to some younger animals. These guys are just under three years old and they were born here. Uh, one of the ones you saw in the earlier part of the video is the parent, a mother and father, both of, the, of these guys. So you can see they're not quite as big yet, but they're doing really well. So common lanceheads have a, a pretty wide range throughout the northern part of South America. This one's got some interesting behavior going on there. A little sideways strike. And they are a pretty significant cause of snake bite uh, in their, throughout their range. Uh, these snakes have a hemorrhagic venom, so a bite from one of these uh, can cause a lot of tissue damage, um, but it also can cause uh, excessive bleeding. And that sort of thing is one of the, um, one of the factors that can lead to uh, kidney damage and renal failure. So they are a dangerous snake uh, where they come from.
So the way in which this venom is hemorrhagic is actually not because the snake prevents blood clotting or the venom doesn't prevent blood clotting. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but it actually creates clots. So that's called a DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy. And basically what that means is the venom induces clots, but it induces so many all over the place that are kind of disorganized and not really doing anything that it uses up your clotting factors. Once your clotting factors are used up, then you start hemorrhaging and bleeding because you don't have those clotting factors left that would normally take care of any sort of little tiny ruptures that may occur uh, normally. It also can be catastrophic if you have um, an aneurysm or a bleed that's pre-existing somewhere, then you can actually um, have a really high risk of having a serious uh, internal bleeding event if that happens to be the case. And sometimes these guys can actually, um, people will spontaneously start bleeding from old cuts that they have, like nicking themselves shaving or something like that. Oh, we just have a couple of snakes left here. one we'll show you guys. I hope you all have enjoyed seeing a little bit more about these snakes. I'll show you a little different view this time. Now remember you can also follow us on Facebook. You could subscribe to see new videos we put out. We always feed snakes the following day after extraction. Watch this snake have a bad strike. Now that is in slow motion, so you can really see the way that their jaws and fangs work when they're striking. And that was just bad aim. The snake made a mistake. I'm not sure how it missed it when it was right in front of its face there, but that does happen sometimes. And here in just a second, uh, the snake tries again and gets a hold of it uh, the second time. I think right here. There we go. And then we allow him to finish up. Thanks for watching everyone. Please remember to subscribe if you enjoy seeing our videos and you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have a great day.